Hello and welcome to Gatsby with WordPress online workshop. In today's meetup, we're going to talk about how to build Gatsby themes with WordPress. We're going to talk about what a decoupled architecture is, um, what is Gatsby, what are different features that it offers, uh, how to use Gatsby themes, and how to create one if you had to do it from scratch. Uh, we we'll also talk about hybrid pages in Gatsby. So this is one of the questions, this is one of the perception a lot of people have that Gatsby can only be used for making static queries and it's, it's just a static site generator, but there is more to it. Uh, you can actually build hybrid pages and make live queries. So in fact, you can uh, to static plus dynamic. So you can do a combination of that. So we'll discuss that as well. Uh, we'll also talk about what are different options of deploying a Gatsby website, like we're on AWS or Netlify or Vercel or in, and different options and, and how and where the WordPress site will be hosted. And a lot of questions, many times people ask us that, can I actually build a WooCommerce store in Gatsby? Well, yes, uh, we're going to talk about that as well. So we will show you some of the demos where we build a WooCommerce store with Gatsby and WordPress. So I'm pretty excited. Are you too? Great. So let me introduce you to our speakers. Uh, we have Sayed Taki, who is a WordPress engineer at Articam and who is one of the regular contributors to WordPress community as well. He has extensive knowledge for both backend as well as frontend and has a specialization in Gutenberg. Uh, we have Sagar Nasit, who is also a WordPress engineer. So Sagar has developed a WooCommerce theme uh, in Gatsby, which he will be showing you the demo shortly. And my name is Imran Sayyad. I'm also a WordPress engineer at, at Articamp. I'm a speaker, blogger, and WordCamp Pune co-organizer, as well as Meetup organizer. I have built a Gatsby theme with WordPress, and I've also built a WooCommerce store site that I will be sharing with you as a demo. Okay, so great, let's begin. We have some of the front end options that are available. Uh, let's say we have Vue.js, we have uh, React, and we also have the Angular available. So looking at all of the options, uh, generally a lot of people use React. So Sayed, I'd like to ask you, with you that, uh, you know, why should someone use React uh, compared to other uh, options that we have available? Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, I think uh, Vue also has similar benefits as React, but uh, what's good for you is totally your choice. Uh, I lean more towards React because it has better ecosystem and WordPress is using React uh, for Gutenberg and I work on WordPress a lot, so it's easier for me. Uh, but similar to Vue, uh, React is component-based, so you can reuse it com with UI components, which is very convenient. Uh, it, reacts to changes. So if some state changes in your component, you don't have to manually render it again, it will render automatically. And uh, therefore, it's easier to work with. And uh, generally, DOM manipulation is costly. But since React uses virtual DOM, it is good for performance. So uh, it's totally our choice what we want to use. Uh, but uh, I haven't used uh, Angular, so I would not talk about those. But uh, Vue and React have uh, similar benefits. Okay, great, thank you. So we can build our site in React itself uh, without a framework, but uh, I've seen there have been a lot of uh, usage of different frameworks that are currently available uh, instead of just building a, a React website uh, from scratch. So, so why do you think uh, that a framework uh, would be helpful compared to building everything from scratch ourselves? Well, uh, you don't necessarily have to use a framework, but it's a tedious task to set up everything from scratch, like mm -hmm. setting up uh, SSR server site rendering. Uh, right. It's a bit difficult task, and there are several things you have to do uh, for a front-end project. So if you do not want to reinvent the wheel and hit the ground, uh, hit the ground, sorry, hit the ground running, uh, frameworks like Gatsby or Next.js are good choices. 
Right. So that come leaves us with a lot of confusion because you know we have different choices available. We have Gatsby. We have uh, the Create React app also that is available, which is not actually a framework, uh, but just a CLI, which a lot of people are familiar with. And then we have Next.js. Uh, so what's the difference like? I mean, how do I choose? How do I decide which framework to choose and when to choose? How, how would I do that actually? Uh, well, mostly uh, we, I mean, the most three, uh, the most, uh, the three most popular frameworks or tools that we have available uh, to use are Next.js, Gatsby, and Create. React app, and but the major difference between uh, Gatsby and Next.js is that Next.js does server-side rendering dynamically. Uh, mm -hmm. However, Gatsby does server-side rendering during the build, right. so you get server rendered output, which we will talk about later uh, mm -hmm. in, in other slides. Okay. Uh, create React app is basically just a tool for React development which does client-side rendering by default because mm -hmm. it doesn't have SSR setup. And I'm sure you would have heard of Create React app if you have learned. Uh, Absolutely. Next. Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. It's, uh, it's this one. And so can you little, tell me, uh, tell us in fact, a little bit more about Gatsby? Like what, what actually is Gatsby? Yeah, so Gatsby is basically an open source framework uh, based on React, which mm -hmm. uses all the latest and the greatest technologies like React.js, GraphQL, Webpack, and mm -hmm. create a static site studio. But a static site doesn't mean that your content will not be dynamic or it cannot do live queries. It mm -hmm. just means that it compiles everything during the build, like I said, and okay. outputs a static HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files, which can be served anywhere you want. So as a result, it's very fast and mm -hmm. performant and doesn't need very expensive hosting because we just have the static HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files. Great. Uh, so this brings us to a question as to how does Gatsby work under the hood? Because we may have heard about, you know, Gatsby is really fast, it serves static sites, but how does it actually work? So let me, uh, you know, explain that part to you. So one thing about Gatsby is that uh, you can bring data from multiple sources. You know, you can bring it from a content management system like a Drupal or WordPress or Contentful. You can get it from a Markdown. You can get it from a third-party API. And basically, gra what Gatsby is going to do is Gatsby has GraphQL and it's going to stitch all of the data together and give you the GraphQL schema so that you can query that data uh, at just one endpoint. Okay, and then finally, it goes ahead and creates the HTML, CSS, and we are components for that. And that gets deployed on the server. So when the user actually accesses your page, uh, you know, those data is already present. The, there wouldn't be any queries that will be running at that point of time. So it also uses the uh, PRPL pattern. Some of you might already have heard about it that it's basically a website architecture which is developed by Google for building fast performance websites. And what this is, it means is that push critical resources for initial URL routing using link preload, uh, HTTP2, and R stands for like rendering initial route. And then P is for pre-caching the remaining routes, and L is for lazy loading and creating the remaining rounds on demand. So this is kind of, uh, you know, uh, steps that it, it follows uh, to achieve this. So following that P PRPL uh, pattern, if we check about that, how things works in Gatsby is that there's a static HTML version of the initial route and it renders the HTML content. And then uh, it loads all of the code bundle for the pages and then it goes ahead and gets all of the resources for the pages and link from initial route during pre-caching. Okay, and then finally, uh, when the link is clicked, let's say the user hits the about page, then uh, it has gone ahead and served, it creates the new pages on demand and it gets the, that particular page from the cache itself. So it's, it's almost instant because 
the entire page with the data in form of JSON is already ready to be served. There's no query that we need to do to our backend to be able to get the data. That's why it's, it's lightning fast. That's how basically it works. Okay, so Gatsby code automatically turns the React component uh, in source pages directory into pages with different URLs, uh, kind of hydrate them into a React application. And uh, so let's say if the user hits the about JS page, uh, it will be available at slash about. Okay, so uh, in the pages directory, what, whichever component you create, let's say you create about.js, so that route will automatically be available. You don't have to do anything. Uh, you go to slash about and whatever you put in that inside of that component will actually be available. Okay, so Sagar, uh, can you tell us a little bit more of the features of Gatsby as well? Uh, hello, all. Uh, I'm Sagar. So uh, Gatsby provides lots of features and a few of them is like a, it, uh, it, the configuration setup uh, requires for modern web tools with uh, React, Webpack, GraphQL, and all of that. It can be a uh, can be a very headache sometime, and especially for a newcomers. So what Gatsby does it it provides or uh, it takes care of all the configuration part, and you just start off immediately with the Gatsby. And uh, next is like a uh, Gatsby provides a content mesh. So as uh, Imran explained that uh, we can use multiple data sources like WordPress, Drupal, Shopify. Uh, what what uh, Gatsby does is that it brings all uh, data from all that so so sources and stitches into a single GraphQL layer and we can query uh, exact data from there. And uh, after that, I can say that uh, one of the uh, cool feature is that we can deploy uh, Gatsby site with uh, services like Netlify, Vercel, and GitHub Pages. It's very easy to like deploy uh, your Gatsby site. And uh, other than that, uh, Gatsby, as Imran explained, uh, it creates static pages. It's just all static files. So we can use uh, services like CDN, which which are more faster than traditional servers. Uh, that's how we can achieve a blazing fast uh, site with Gatsby. And in normal site, uh, I would say that uh, we may have a database connections. Uh, maybe if we if we are using a WordPress, we may have a WordPress admin. Uh, Gatsby has only a static files and so that avoids all the possibility of database attacks and we can also if we use a cdn services we can also prevent a ddos attack it's uh, using gatsby uh, is very secure mm -hmm. and uh, on top of that gatsby provides some of the features uh, out of the out of the box uh, features like uh, progressive uh, web app uh, progressive image lazy, lazy loading, uh, offline view, and uh, all that we can achieve by just by installing a Gatsby plugin. It's very easy to start with uh, starting with a Gatsby. Yep, perfect. Thank you so much for sharing that, uh, Sagar. And now we're going to talk about how to use Gatsby themes actually uh, in a decoupled architecture. Okay, so I think we don't have anyone else uh, waiting. So we can now uh, start with the theme development. Okay. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use WordPress in the backend and React in the frontend with a decoupled architecture. And whether you are a beginner or you have a very little technical knowledge, you're just a user, or even if you are a professional developer this is going to be for you okay so in this video I'm going to show you how you can use this Gatsby theme that I've built which means that your front-end application will be in react using JavaScript and that will use the Gatsby framework and your back-end will be in WordPress so if you already have a site uh, existing site in WordPress you can go ahead and use this theme so that your users can have a better 
experience when you, they are using your front-end application. So as you can see that this is the Gatsby site. It's already live, so you can test it on this URL. And all of the content that you see over here, the menu, uh, you know, the images that you see, the banner. Uh, you also have a search option, so you can search like this, and you can go into that post. And then you have categories, you can click on these categories, there you go, you can see you've got post related to categories over, showing over here, you can go on the next page as well, so you can click on the next page and you can go on the next page. And then if you scroll down, you have the featured post, which you can select from WordPress, you can select from the backend, you can click on read more, currently it doesn't have a lot of content, but you can put that, you can put featured image as well okay uh, you can see all of the blogs so this is the blog post page that you currently seeing and this has got all of the blocks being listed over here you can click on the next page then you can see you have next page you can go back to previous page so you've got the pagination over here uh, you have the site logo that you see and you also have a latest post section which will show three of the latest posts okay um, and these are the widgets that you see over here uh, so a lot of you have asked me can I use widgets from WordPress into my front-end React application the answer is yes you can do that so these widgets that you see right here are coming from WordPress and then you also have options to select a header menu which is this and a footer menu as well right and the best part is that there are some of the cool features that this is going to give you first is the performance I mean you click on the page like this and you can see that you go straight into this page so it's so smooth right I mean you, there is no page refresh unlike if you build a theme in WordPress if you use WordPress theme then there will be a page refresh notice there is no page refresh wherever I click right so I can go to any pages and it's super super fast user doesn't have to wait it's almost instant right okay apart from that what are the other features that it offers so why should you use this theme well if you do a refresh you will notice there is a blur effect which means that the images are optimized so when you go to these blog pages and just do a hard refresh you can see that the images are being uh, loaded uh, with a lazy load which means that they are optimized okay uh, right and apart from that this application that you see is also PWA which means it will work in a poor connectivity uh, it's going to work even when the user is offline which means you will get a better user experience more users will be engaged on your site because the clicks are almost instant a lot of people leave the website when it's slow so you can see it's really really fast and at the same time because it's PWA so let me give you a demo so this this uh, one is responsive as well which you will show in, in a moment okay so let's go to this URL which is the same URL of the theme and you can open it you can see there is a blur effect so images are being optimized and now you get an option to add to home screen when you do that this gets installed as an application as a mobile um, as an application on the mobile itself just like other apps so now if you go to your other apps where all other apps are there you can see there is an icon you open it you straight into the app and now you can see that you know this behaves like your native app right it looks beautiful isn't it it's responsive and there you go and now what we're gonna do is so now I've closed the application and I'm going to go offline so I've switched off my internet and I'm going to open the app again there you go and you can see there is no internet but still my website works isn't that brilliant awesome so you can try it out yourself you can just open this URL in your mobile application and uh, try to add it to your mobile and try to use it offline okay brilliant now so this is the front end that you've seen also I want to show you in the, the back end stuff so this is my back end uh, I'm also using your ACF a lot of you have been wondering can I actually use ACF with react on the front end well yes you can with this theme uh, you can go ahead and 
use ACF. So you can see all of these fields are being created with the ACF and all of the content, most of the content I would say that you see on the home page is coming from the ACF, right? So if you go to the pages, you can see these are all of the pages that you see on the front end, right? And let's go on to the home page. So this is my home page and you can see all of this content, the banner, the description, the image, the search label, right? The taxonomies, which is your categories, um, your icons that you see over here, so these icons, right? Uh, your featured post, you can select whichever post you want to show in the front end, so you can decide. It's all yours. Go ahead, use it. <laughs> okay. So all of these contents that you see are coming from here, right? So you have a P-shirt post selection as well. And then you have the latest uh, three latest posts that are being displayed right here, okay? Now, you have an option to set the menus. Um, so if you go over here, you go to menus. So these are the menus. So there's a header menu. So all of the menus that you see on top is coming from the header menu over here and then you have a footer menu as well so you can select the footer one you can set these yourself you can change their alignment you can you know uh, rearrange them whatever you like whatever you put over here is going to be shown onto the footer okay and uh, whatever link you put that page is going to open up right okay and then you also have widgets options so the widgets that you see down at the bottom which is widget 1 and widget 2 that's coming from here so you can see the HCMS footer and the content that you uh, put over here is being displayed right here okay so you have an option to put, to put uh, two widgets as well in fact you put, can put more as well but I would recommend as per the design you put two of them okay the social icons that you see uh, you must be wondering can I change that well yes you can so come over here into customize and then you have the social link section so you can put all of your links over here so whatever links you put is going to be shown uh, is going to be inserted in, in as a link for these okay if you want only three of them you can just use three of them as well right great and what about uh, can I change the title well yes you can change the title so you just have to come over here change the type title from here change the tagline right you can change it whatever you put that as you can see that will be displayed here okay even the title can be changed from here and then the logo can also be changed okay so all all of these are editable and uh, even the link for this page that they currently takes you to the blog page you can change that if you want to take it to a different page okay and you have a search so whatever post you're going to put you're going to have the search option for that okay so you will get and it's an instant search right so it's 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 like lightning fast right and uh, how can you actually use the theme is it free yes is it it is free I build this only for you people you can use it how, where can I get it from well you can get it from the NPM it's it's totally free on NPM so you can install this theme in your Gatsby project I'm going to show you in a moment how to install it and all of the information about it how to set it up and everything has been given over here so super cool isn't it right I will be adding more features into this uh, soon like uh, I'll be adding forms which a lot of you have asked me um, and I will be adding more stuff as well maybe currently we have pagination if you would like to load more or something you know we'll always add that we can also probably add authentication if you need it but uh, for now I, I think this is good enough as for a general use if you want to have a blogging site this is perfect for you okay and if you have more needs you can always check so you can see that you've got taxonomy archive page as well all this while we have been learning how to use the theme of course before we actually start building the theme it's important to learn how to use the Gatsby themes if you have little technical knowledge you can just directly use this theme you can just go to this git repository or you can even go to npm uh, package there's an npm package for that and it explains to you how to use this theme so, so if you would like to have the wordpress theme in react uh, you can use this with the gatsby framework it's totally free okay so let's start building the theme now so the first thing we want to do is create a directory okay dir called gatsby wordpress themes 
you can name it what you want and let's cd into it and then there are two more directories that we need the first directory we need is the site where our site will reside and another one will be packages so your theme will reside in packages so so themes are also plugins in Gatsby so if you want to publish it to NPM then you'll be able to publish it from the packages directory okay so let's do that and the next thing we need is we want to do yarn in it so the reason why we're using yarn is because uh, we want to manage multiple workspaces so since we have two directories we have site we have packages as well if we use yarn workspaces then we can act actually do a lot of stuff like we can uh, install the packages inside of site directory or the packages theme directory uh, from my root itself using yarn so you'll see in a moment how useful yarn workspaces are okay awesome so we'll do yarn in it and then we'll give the name the same version would be 0 0.0.1 .0 description get Gatsby WordPress theme and then entry point can stay as it is author license private yes this will be private and that's it I'm also going to open this packet uh, I'm also going to open this project into my editor so you can see I've got packages I've got side and I've got this package.json that's already created okay uh, you also want to you would also want to add the workspaces information into this so what I'm going to do is just add workspaces and here you need to tell which workspaces you want to use so I'm going to use site and I'm going to use packages and everything inside of it so that's why I mentioned that here okay we'll add some script as well in a moment but let's finish all of the other stuff first so now we also need to create our theme directory so I'm going to do mk dir inside of packages and let's name it as Gatsby WordPress themes theme and my themes name is this so this is my theme name basically but I would suggest to choose a different name because there's already one that exists with this name since I have already published a package with this name okay so if you're planning to do npm publish then you can go ahead and choose a different name okay brilliant uh, so that's done and now you want to do npm init inside of these two directories one is our theme and second is the site okay so let's do that so I'm going to do cd site and do npm init and it's asking you for package names so probably I can just say Gatsby theme version can stay like 0 0.0.1 .0 description Gatsby theme entry point as command repository keyword author license and that's it okay and um, you want to do npm init inside of our theme directory as well so I'll do CD I'll go into that packages Gatsby WordPress themes npm init and this is important people so make sure that uh, this information is correct so Gatsby WordPress theme Phoenix version number so basically this will be your package name so whatever you put here this will be a version number description Gatsby WordPress theme entry point test command git repository keyword author license and that's it okay the next thing we want to do is basically add some of the packages inside of our sites directory um, so since we already have our package.json in these two uh, we with the help of yarn will be able to install the packages okay this name my friend will be site this won't be uh, Gatsby because this is site so generally if you want to do npm install you do npm install if you want to use yarn you use yarn add but since we want to use the workspaces you will do yarn workspace the name of the workspace so in our case this is going to be site and 
then add which package you want to add. For Gatsby, we just need Gatsby, we need React, and we need React DOM. We'll also use another package called dot dot called dot env. The reason for this is because we want we don't want to push the sensitive information like probably a site URL or some ID that we need, maybe Google Analytics ID uh, on maybe some uh, deployment information onto the GitHub. So that's why we'll put into .env. So that's why we let's hit enter. There you go. So you and it's resolving all the packages. Okay, so let it do that. So the next thing, so our package is already installed. The next thing we want to do is basically install the Gatsby React and React DOM into our theme. So I'll do yarn workspace Gatsby WordPress theme Phoenix and that's going to be Gatsby React and React DOM and I'll put that as D and of course we have to do Gatsby workspace and then add over here okay so it's adding all of the packages to our uh, theme okay so this is the package that we need we also need some of the other packages which we are going to install so I'm just going to copy that from here and open up another tab while that is being installed I'm also going to take care of this so I'll do I'll paste this so let me explain that to you so this is going to be Gatsby WordPress theme Phoenix and uh, we're going to add the Gatsby plugin manifest this is useful for since we are going to be developing a PWA yes you heard it right we're going to be building a progressive web app which is basically a uh, web application which behaves as native apps so you will be able to you know use users will be able to use your website offline as well read your blog and stuff like that isn't that pretty cool okay uh, you have the React helmet, so people who have worked with React, you already know it allows us to, uh, you know, insert our uh, sub different links or anything that we want to insert instead of the head tag. We can do that with this. Then we have the Gatsby plugin SAS, which is for SCSS since we'll be using SAS. And then you have the Gatsby plugin Sharp, and you also have the Gatsby Transformer Sharp which will be used for image optimization that's one of the key uh, features of Gatsby that it offers you image optimization so it it will help us make the images fluid uh, as well and then you have the Gatsby source file system uh, which will be used in case if you want to access any of the images or any other directories so we can define that file you will see that in a moment and then uh, you have the react helmet again you already know about this and then you have the Gatsby Source GraphQL plugin. So Gatsby Source GraphQL plugin is basically used for connecting the arbitrary GraphQL APIs to Gatsby GraphQL. So since we will be using WP GraphQL in the WordPress backend to get the WordPress data uh, using GraphQL queries, we would requ require this plugin in the front end Gatsby site as well. Okay. So let's go ahead and install it. And I think this was this is already done. Okay, and uh, what we also want to do is basically add this as a dependency in your site package.json. So I've already done that. I think. Yeah. So come over here. Mm, yep. Yeah, inside of site and add this as your dependency. So everything, all the packages of Gatsby WordPress Theme Phoenix, which is your theme actually, uh, all of this package, star means all of the packages will be added as a dependency for your site. Okay, So you can run your site directly from here. And then there are also some peer dependency you need to add, which you've already done. So these are the peer dependencies. What peer dependencies are, uh, for example, if you have a package that you are publishing, in, in our case it's the theme actually, uh, if the user is going to install this package uh, into their actual project they would anyways be using Gatsby and React and React DOM so uh, we add this as a peer dependency because even our actual project which is going to use this plugin is going to require that as well okay so just add Gatsby React and React DOM as the peer dependency okay 
Okay, brilliant. So we're going to see you. So we've installed all of the required packages for now, <clears throat> and uh, um, the next thing we want to do is basically define some of the configuration. Okay, what we're going to do now is basically add some of the configuration uh, for our project. Okay, so before we did that, uh, I will start with this plugin first, which is WP GraphQL. So WP GraphQL is a WordPress plugin that would actually bring the power of GraphQL to WordPress. So it will allow your front-end application, which is in React, to query WordPress data uh, using GraphQL at an endpoint, which will be at slash GraphQL. So let's say your WordPress website is example.com. It'll be at example.com slash GraphQL. So go ahead and uh, download this plugin from here and install it. Then we're going to need the uh, WB Graphical as well, which is actually used to have a playground, the GraphQL GraphQL playground. And then we're going to need the ACF. We're going to need the ACF Advanced Custom Field because we're using ACF for the post meta, and then which will have a dependency on WP GraphQL ACF, which is actually required uh, for us to query the ACF data from WordPress. And then this is the headless CMS plugin which I have created, which actually extends the WP GraphQL in case if you would like to get some custom data and if the schema or the fields are not available for that data you can I'll go back here and I'll go to my plugins and I'll just show you that it's been I have done that already so I've activated all of these plugins and I will now have the WP I now have the graph graphical which is actually the playground where I can do all my queries okay so for example if I want to get all of the posts I can do posts and how many do I want I I want first <coughs> So I want first 10 posts, let's say. I can do this. I can get the uh, post using edges, node, and then the title of the post, ID. And let's say I want the excerpt, and then hit it. There you go. So you can see that you've got a 10 posts, uh, latest 10 posts using this query. Isn't that really cool? Awesome. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and add some configuration to our site uh, in the front-end application. So you go, you can add the configuration into Gatsby config. So I'll create a file called gatsbyconfig.js inside of my sites directory. And, um, and I'm just going to paste some code and then explain it to you. Okay. So remember we installed the .env package and that is required so that you can uh, create an env file so you can see that I've created an env file here dot env if you haven't already you can create one and inside of this I have defined a variable called site URL so you can do that and then you can put your WordPress site URL over here so let's say your WordPress site URL is, is at example.com so you'll put like HTTP or HTTPS colon slash slash example.com in my case uh, mine is at uh, up subdirectory so I'll, I'll put that here okay so what this is going to do is, uh, because we are using the .env package, it's going to make this variable available inside of any of the node files, uh, which is basically your common JS files, inside of process.env dot whatever the variable name is. In this case, site URL. Okay. So what we're doing is basically uh, we are just telling Gatsby which theme we are going to use into our project. So site is our project, and I'm telling Gatsby, okay, go ahead and resolve this particular plugin for me because that's the plugin we're building. And then we are passing some options to this theme uh, by using WordPress URL, and then we are doing process.env.site URL as I just explained. So this site URL that we've defined here will be available here. The reason why we are doing this is because we don't want to push this information onto GitHub. So this will be in Git Ignore. Okay. So since we've got this, now we also need to create a config file inside of config.js inside of my uh, Gatsby theme, okay, and I'm just going to paste some code over here just to save time, and I'll then explain it to you. Okay, so inside of the config, what do we have here? So, like I said, this WordPress URL that we are passing from here 
uh, from our site uh, Gatsby config will be available to our themes Gatsby config and then I can use it okay and then you can define some of the site data that you want to use like title description author uh, ideally this should come from WordPress but for now I'll just define it here and then whichever plugin you're going to use in Gatsby it's important that you define them inside of plugin you just need to tell Gatsby which are the plugins that you're going to use if you just install them it's not going to work automatically okay so I'm, I'm using Helmet, I'm using Transformer Shop, Plugin Shop, Sauce, uh, and then I'm using the file system. So this would require me to create. Uh, so if I want to get images, I can define my path, whichever directory I want to get my images. So in this case, I want to keep all my files. Generally, people keep it in source directory, so I'll keep it there. And then inside of source in my theme, uh, I will have images directory, and that's where all my images go. Then I have the plugin manifest, so this is required for the PW application, like what will be the theme, uh, background color, theme color, and you know, uh, and also what will be the icon when the user opens your application on mobile. Okay, so I can add this favicon. I think I've already downloaded that. I'm just going to get that favicon, and I'm just going to paste it here. And uh, this is just the URL of that favicon. Okay, and this is the route where the, your site should open up from when the user opens up your uh, app in mobile. Okay, and this plugin, like I explained to you, this is for uh, getting the GraphQL data. Uh, you need to define a type name, so I, I put that as HW GraphQL and then field name also. So your data will be available under this field name and then the URL. So like I said, it'll be WordPress URL slash GraphQL that is the URL you'll be able to query the data from. Refetch interval means that uh, when you are developing it's going to refresh the data during that interval so you can define your interval if you if you think 60 seconds is too low you can increase it because otherwise it'll keep rebuilding uh, every 60 seconds okay great and this is uh, this is for the offline feature which is PWA feature so we will come back to this later alright what we're going to do is we will go ahead and start our Gatsby server and we will also add some scripts so that it allows us to run the Gatsby server so that we can start development. Okay, awesome. So what we're going to do is the first thing we'll do is we will install the Gatsby CLI and you can do that. So you'll do npm install Gatsby CLI dash j. So this is going to install the Gatsby CLI globally. Um, it can help you create new projects by doing Gatsby uh, space and the new project etc so you don't have to do everything manually okay uh, that's another way of setting up a project okay but since we're going from scratch let's do it this way awesome so I have already installed it so I don't need to do that then once you install this it gives since it gives you the Gatsby CLI command access so with the help of Gatsby command you can do a lot of stuff for example you can start the development server, you can build, you can do all sort of things. So let's begin with the development first. So we will come back to our site package.json. I'm going to close everything. Uh, I'll come to site package package.json and over here uh, you can see that I've already added these scripts. So the first one is Gatsby develop uh, and I'm putting an alias for that as dev. You can put start also. Some people do that. It's up to you what you want to do. Uh, this is going to start a development server using the Gatsby CLI command. Uh, this, my friend, is going to help you with the build command. Okay, uh, some people do prod. You can do that if you like and change the name. But Gatsby build is going to help you build build the project. Okay, and serve. Ideally, Gatsby serve allows you to serve it uh, on localhost 9000 so that you can check how it's going to look like in production before you actually deploy it. Um, generally what you do is when you serve it ideally you should clean the cache using Gatsby clean command uh, because it saves the data in form of cache and then you should build it using Gatsby build command and then serve it so rather than running these three commands separately I've combined them together and put them as one command using the and and op, uh, over here so you can just run npm run serve and it's going to serve your site at localhost 9000 awesome so what we're going to do now is we also so this is my site uh, where i have written these commands 
of course I need to let my root of the project know about this as well because all of the commands that we're running so far should ideally be from the root and not from here okay so what we're gonna do is for that so we're going to go ahead and add some scripts here so I've done that so let me explain this to you so since we're using yarn we already know in order for us to add a package you need to use yarn add and um, you need to do yarn workspace the name of the workspace and then add in our case I want to run the dev command so instead of npm install since we are using yarn we'll do yarn workspace site which means go to site and run this command which is equivalent to npm npm run dev okay so this you can consider is equivalent to npm run dev but for this particular uh, directory which is site and then package.json okay and then for build we use this and then this my friend is going to go to serve actually serve awesome and since we know that inside of our theme uh, we keep all of our packages uh, all of our st all of our data for the front end inside of s source directory all of the files for the front end inside of source directory we're going to go ahead and create a directory called pages and we're going to create an a directory called index sorry we're going to create a file called index.js and inside of this I can just do index page equals so I'll use a react component here of course I need to import react since we've already Im installed react so I'll just pull that from there uh, okay okay and then return and we're gonna do the common stuff that we always do can you guess it what we're going to do now yes we're going to do hello world <laughs> okay great okay let's change it let's change the tradition let's do hello Gatsby <laughs> okay fine and you also need to do export default index page okay all right so now we, we can actually start our development server by doing npm run dev and see what happens there you go so the magic begins so what this is doing is it is going ahead and running the uh, this command right here where is it this one npm run dev so this is going to run yarn workspace site dev which means in turn it's going to run Gatsby develop and since we have put this as dependency okay it's going to use the packages from there and since inside of our config of our site we have mentioned that please go ahead and use this plugin it's going to go ahead and use that plugin as our I think we accidentally I think we accidentally created the Gatsby config here in the root of the packages this should actually go inside of the theme so just move it here and and over here instead of headless WordPress this will be headless CMS that's what my where my site resides theme okay so it's running the Gatsby develop let's just wait for that to happen <coughs> there you go you can see that it's validating the config loading all of the plugins copying the Gatsby file building the schema creating pages of course we haven't created any of the pages but that's what it's going to do eventually uh, update the schema building development bundle it's doing all sort of stuff and running the page queries and so once that is done it's going to serve beautifully at the URL localhost 8000 awesome let's look at this there you go so come over here open it up and I'm expecting hello Gatsby absolutely okay great so you've got hello Gatsby you've got our site running and this power you're going to get and this power thing powerful thing is called 
graphical. So you'll have access to graphical here. So now if I refresh, you can see that on the double underscore double score GraphQL triple underscore gra sla slash triple underscore GraphQL, you also have the HW GraphQL. You can query any of the pages uh, like this, like edges, node. You can get let's say the title of the page you can just click like that make your queries and you can get date of the post you can get the page ID you can get the slug as well here's the slug and um, just query it like so and here you go you can see you've got all of the pages this is how you're gonna query the best part is that uh, because all of these things will already be available because we will test our queries before we actually write them uh, it will save a lot of time for us in making any of the mistakes right so graphical is super helpful as you can see awesome I'll see you then okay so so far uh, I think uh, we have gone ahead and uh, learned about how to building the team how to build it from scratch and uh, there are further things that you can do apart from that as well. Uh, for example, how would we actually create pages? So if you go to this uh, repo, uh, we have a URL here. I've shared that in the chat as well. Uh, and if you go to the theme, we have something called create pages. So I've already built all of this. Uh, and for different things like for building posts, we can actually write different queries. Okay, so you can see there are all of the queries. And uh, Gatsby has different files that are available. Uh, for example, you have the file called Gatsby node.js. So this is the place where you're going to uh, go ahead and create all of the pages. So there's a function which is called uh, create pages. So you're going to use this function to uh, go ahead and run all of your queries to create the pages. So as you can see over here that we are uh, going ahead and calling this function. Uh, it gives you access to actions and GraphQLs as well. And this function finally is on use this file. So if you go back to that. So create pages, let's say this is the posts. So similarly, like I've shown you on the uh, graphical, we can write our queries like this. We can write our queries like this, and uh, finally, then we can call this function, which is create pages. Uh, it returns the data, which is post, and let's say categories also. And then this create function is going to go ahead and create pages for all of those posts. So when we actually retrieve the post, we also get the URI uh, of that post. So it's going to automatically create those pages. And similarly, we can create uh, archive pages as well as uh, normal pages and posts etc okay so there will be uh, a full series for this if you would li like to learn further because it is difficult to cover everything in uh, in a short span of time in a, in one meetup uh, but if you would like to go ahead and learn more i'm going to share the link with you there is a series for this which i'm adding more uh, tutorials in that and you can learn further okay uh, now there are a couple more things i'd like to share with you uh, so these are basically the Gatsby files. So we discussed that Gatsby config.js is the place where uh, you can configure different options for Gatsby site with metadata, project title, description, etc. Uh, you have Gatsby node.js as well, uh, where you can implement the Gatsby node APIs like I've shown you the create pages and stuff. And you also have Gatsby browser.js. So we know that since it is server-side render, a lot of time if you want a document, for example, uh, the document won't be available uh, to your component. So if you want to go ahead and uh, you know, do anything browser-related stuff, you can uh, do over here in this file. So how does this graph, a Gatsby source GraphQL plugin work? So as I've explained to you, it's for connecting arbitrary GraphQL APIs to Gatsby GraphQL and it stitches the remote schema together. Now, we're gonna to talk about the hybrid app pages. 
Now, all this while we have seen that Gatsby is serving the static data and static pages from the server. But what if, if we want to uh, build forms or for example, there's a load more on the post, which is on the same page itself. Uh, then we may need to do some live queries uh, like authentication, etc. So Gatsby is not not just a static site generator, but you can also build hybrid pages with the uh, Gatsby. So how does that work? Is basically uh, create pages can make calls to external services and APIs in order to allow more interactive and dynamic behavior. Okay, so you can actually get that. Uh, there could also be possibility of you building a live search query and, and that's when uh, you would need to build the hybrid pages. Now, how do I query those things? Well, you have Apollo GraphQL that you can use uh, for doing the query. It provides you with many of the functions like uh, you, many of the hooks like use query and uh, you, know, you can do mutations, etc. as well. So let's discuss uh, more about uh, Gatsby theme. So Sagar is going to now uh, explain more about Gatsby theme uh, further. So Sagar, would you like to take over? Yep. Thank you, Imran. You're welcome. I'm just so, going to stop the share. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Does it give you option to share the screen? Yep. Okay. Just give me a second. I. Can you see my screen? Yep. Good. Yep. Uh, so let's uh, let's talk about uh, Gatsby theme. Uh, so Gatsby theme uh, themes are just a uh, little more little more than a Gatsby site. Gatsby themes allows us to like a package or gets beside functionality and we can manage and we can bundle we can so gets beside functionality to be managed as a stand, standalone package it allows uh, us to manage as an npm package and uh, how we can do that uh, that is we it is actually a pre-configured gets site with all the functionality and ui for example if you if you want to install any block theme with a WordPress and uh, what uh, Gatsby theme will do that it will handle all the querying for data from the WordPress site and creating all the block pages, single pages, pagination, all that in Gatsby. So all these things can be used in a single Gatsby theme package. And uh, uh, let's talk about some benefits of using Gatsby theme. So uh, we can, as as we can uh, use Gatsby theme as a standalone package. We, what we can do is that we can use it. We can use a uh, multiple site uh, and consume that same package onto the multiple site. And uh, uh, before, if we don't use a uh, Gatsby theme, what we need to do is like get, create a a separate new uh, Gatsby project and develop the same thing. But uh, since now we develop an, an uh, Gatsby theme, we don't need to do that. We we can use the same package uh, at in another Gatsby site. And maintaining the versions uh, would be very easy. For example, if you added uh, some of the new functionalities in your Gatsby theme, what other uh, are, are the person uh, which, are, which is using Gatsby theme, what uh, he needs to do is just to update uh, his package to the newest or, let, or the latest uh, version and then uh, he can update his site with the latest Gatsby theme. Uh, also, uh, we can use uh, multiple Gatsby theme uh, inside uh, our Gatsby site. So for example, we can use an a block theme along with the e-commerce site. Uh, that's how we can use uh, multiple functionality sites with the Gatsby theme. And uh, yep, so that's uh, how we can use a Gatsby theme. And all right. So 
Uh, Sagar, thank you so much. And what about uh, WooCommerce? You know, if we want to build a WooCommerce store, how would that work with WordPress and Gatsby? Oh, yes. Uh, so for WooCommerce, can we build a WooCommerce theme? So yes, we we can surely build a Gatsby WooCommerce uh, theme. Actually, as you, as you have shown, uh, Imran, that... Uh, mm -hmm how we can use Gatsby with WordPress. What we need to do from WordPress site is just need to install WP GraphQL. Mm -hmm. So similarly, uh, uh, WP GraphQL developers created a extension plugin for WooCommerce. It's mm -hmm. a Woo GraphQL. Right. So along with uh, WP GraphQL, what we need to do is that install Woo GraphQL in your WordPress site. Mm -hmm. You just need to uh, create some products on your WordPress site and uh, you can actually query all of that products inside your Gatsby site. Let me show you uh, one single demo that I've created. Yes, that, that'll be helpful. I think we all want to know if we have something that we can take as a reference. Yep. So uh, you guys, can you see? Yes, it's visible. Yeah. Go ahead. Yep. So this is the... This is the Gatsby WooCommerce site. Uh, so these are the, all, all the products I listed. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, the, the products are all in paginated. Uh, you can view a single product page. You can add uh, products from here in your cart. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can view or you can manage all your products uh, here. Okay. So, and are is, these products uh, statically rendered? Uh, so yes. So since we are using Gatsby, it's all statically rendered. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the reasons uh, for using uh, static, uh, statically rendered uh, products are because this is uh, we I we can use this site uh, in offline mode as well as you shown your demo in uh, in your theme. Absolutely. So this is this is the Gatsby theme. Uh, which you can view all all your products uh, even if you are offline. Yeah, even I think that would be use, great because uh, if we make the sites available as uh, uh, you know uh, offline, then uh, we can get more users, uh, which we lose because of connectivity issue, right? Yes, uh, it, that uh, there are lots of uh, benefits of using an offline or we can say a PWA uh, Gatsby site. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. uh, so how is the add to cart being handled? Is that making a live query or you know how, how that thing is working? Actually, okay, so add to cart uh, is I'm doing for uh, since we, uh, I'm building an uh, site uh, where it could be an offline. So I'm using a local storage to maintain all my cart data for after you add all that. Uh, uh, all the products in in the card. I am maintaining it via a local storage. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, since uh, I am using it for uh, for offline purpose, I am not using any live query. Right. So, uh, since you mentioned you're using it in a local storage, which is pretty great because then if the user, even if they close the browser, that cart is all always going to be persistent. But yes. uh, what about the security concerns? I mean. Uh, isn't local storage uh, accessible to everyone and you know anyone can go and uh, change the product price and and then get probably the product for free so <laughs> how would that work <laughs> uh, yeah so that uh, that is being handled uh, so currently i'm just adding products in the local storage but what we can do for that that particular concern is that uh, whenever we uh, we are going for a checkout what right. we can do is we can actually make a live query Absolutely. to the uh, WooCommerce site and we can validate all the data from there. Correct. Uh, so that's the hacker how we won't can, be able to do anything. <laughs> yes. So that's how we can validate uh, if someone uh, managed to like modify all the data from so what in, you inside the local store. You're going to sync your cart uh, with the live. Yes. And for that, uh, as you mentioned, uh, that uh, Apollo GraphQL. So similarly in Gatsby, uh, there is a plugin called, I think, Gatsby Apollo GraphQL. Yes. Where using that, I think we can make a GraphQL uh, 
live graphql query to the woocommerce site that will be that would be a very uh, good to implement for uh, for the e-commerce site okay that's great uh, what about handling payment gateways now we may have different options like uh, paypal or or you know uh, card mm -hmm. payments etc so uh, or even stripe so how do we take care of that uh yep so for payments uh, so since uh, gatsby sites are static sites we have very limited uh, options for payments so mm -hmm. one of the options is like is a stripe most mm -hmm. of the gatsby uh, e-commerce sites uh, use a stripe for that even uh, gatsby gatsby's own uh, uh, gatsby's own store mm -hmm. uh, swag store is using stripe for payments and uh, other than that if you want to implement a payment gateway in your gatsby site what you can do is that uh, uh, so the best thing uh, we can do with gatsby uh, for the payment is that we can redirect uh, users to the word uh, woocommerce site for payment only mm -hmm. We can use Gatsby site for uh, for handling uh, all the all the site traffic, and after uh, and also we can manage the view uh, uh, manage the cart. But uh, after after that, if someone want to check out, then we move uh, him to the WooCommerce site, and we can use the any payment gateway, PayPal, Stripe, uh, or any other payment. Options Great! There. I think that that's pretty clever because then user interactivity, user experience will be good because when he is clicking between different products, adding to cart, it's going to be fast, and then eventually uh, he can just be redirected for the payment. Uh, but I believe we can integrate payment gateways ourselves, but that would only mean that we have to write the code uh, ourselves, right? Yep. Okay, and what about my account page? Because in WooCommerce, the, the user who is buying stuff also has a my account page. So will that be handled on the Gatsby side or will that be on WordPress? How will that work? So for uh, my account page, we can, I, I'm actually not doing it in this demo, but uh, mm -hmm. well, how we can do is that we can uh, use hybrid pages. pages. Right. Uh, so, Gatsby, Gatsby. Uh, if you're using Gatsby, you can uh, search for like a client-only routes. Mm -hmm. So what client-only routes allows us to is like uh, we can we can render content dynamically on that pages. So the client-only routes. Right. So uh, if we create a profile page, then we can query a user's profile from a WooCommerce site. Even if we if we, we can we can fetch uh, order past orders from mm -hmm. WooCommerce store and we can show that in into our Gatsby site. Uh, that that's how we can manage all the my account pages. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, one thing I'm sure our you know listeners, our attendees would like to hear about and they would be interested in know is authentication. You know, if if we yes. had to build authentication on the front end yes. side itself, which is on Gatsby. Uh, how can we actually do that and also ensure there is security to it? Yep. So for authentication, uh, if if we are using WordPress, what we can do is that we can use WordPress REST API for mm -hmm. basic authentication. Yep. We, uh, we can, we can uh, take a username or a password and we can uh, we can validate uh, with WordPress REST API, and we can uh, we can provide a login with that. Another option is that uh, using JWT authentication. Yes, I so, was going to hear about that. Yes. Yeah, and if we if you are using WP GraphQL, you can also do a JWT authentication with WP GraphQL as well. Right. Uh, I think there is, there is a extension plugin for. Uh, WordPress. You just need mm -hmm. to install that, and you what what uh, it will do is that you will receive the token from the WP GraphQL, and you can use that token in your subsequent requests for authentication. Okay, that's great. Uh, what about the coupons and discounts? How would that work? Yep. So coupons and discounts. So uh, 
uh, like uh, I'm managing cart with local storage, we can store all the, uh, all the coupons data inside the local storage. That is the one of the way we can uh, do it in offline mode, but uh, we have- We still need to verify it, right? Yes, so we need to ensure that uh, all the coupons are validated with the WooCommerce store. And right. that we can do with the Apollo GraphQL. Right, so one of the things that always comes up is that there are a lot of uh, WooCommerce plugins, WordPress plugins uh, that are available. Now, when we are building a decoupled arch architecture like this, uh, then are we going to be able to use some of those plugins uh, or would they work by default or do we have to do anything for them to make, make it work? So uh, I would say that uh, there are some restrictions uh, with uh, WordPress plugins uh, we can use with Gatsby. That is why that is, the reason is uh, because we need some endpoint like a GraphQL or REST endpoint where we can query or send data with the Gatsby. So if if the plugin provides a REST API or a GraphQL support, we can surely use that uh, plugins inside uh, our Gatsby. Site. I'm I'm glad you brought that saga because that was my next question. That can we actually extend WP GraphQL? Because if you're going to be querying everything from the GraphQL from WordPress, then what about those schemas uh, that are not available? Like for example, when we install a new plugin into WordPress, how will that work? Can is WP GraphQL extendable? Can we do that? Uh, in WP GraphQL, uh, so there are basic scalar types. Uh, if you know WP GraphQL, so booleans, floats, integers, yep. ID, and string, that are all the basic scalar types available in WP GraphQL. So what you can do is that using that type, you can actually create a custom object type mm -hmm. in WP GraphQL. And right. uh, uh, also, WP GraphQL do that uh, automatically when we when we register for some custom post type or custom taxonomy in WordPress. How it uh, how it ensures that we it will be available via WP GraphQL is that WP GraphQL adds uh, dynamically adds uh, object type for that particular CPT or taxonomy. Correct. Absolutely. So we can do we can do extend the WP GraphQL schema. Correct. So I just wanted to uh, let you know that uh, one of the best things about Gatsby is that there are so many plugins that are available. Now, coming back to the question that will the plugins that we install in WordPress be automatically compatible? Now, since there are a lot of developers who are building this community, already building so many plugins that you can search, uh, there are high possibility that if you want to do something, let's say if you want to add Google Analytics to your website, there's already a plugin for that. Uh, if you want to deploy it to probably AWS, there's already a plugin for that. So even if you search over here, you know, you should be able to uh, get something uh, related to that. So you can see that is the S3 plugin, which is AWS S3 bucket plugin available. So there are high chances you may find it, uh, but if it isn't, it gives you an opportunity to build the plugin uh, because Gatsby system works with plugins and then make sure that if it's a very popular WordPress plugin, you can add the support for that but probably extending the WP GraphQL plugin as well. Okay, uh, coming back to the live query, how can we actually do that? So this is the WooCommerce that I've built uh, that is actually in the next JS, but you can implement a similar approach into Gatsby as well, wherein you can have the live query. So let me give you a, a quick demo on this. So if you wanna test it out, you can test it here. So these are all of the products that are coming live. All of the prices that you see is, is making a live query to WordPress, which means if you change uh, the price of the product, it'll be updated here on the next reload. Uh, you can do add to cart. Again, this is uh, making a live add to cart uh, over here. And uh, at the same time, uh, the WordPress session is actually being handled on the WordPress itself, which means that the WP GraphQL WooCommerce plugin is actually taking care of uh, everything. We don't have to uh, handle the cart functionality ourselves. We don't actually have to handle 
uh, the what is the total amount of product, what are the taxes, and all that stuff. That plugin already has all of this schema that takes care of that. So we can actually uh, do live queries as well. And even when we are doing the uh, checkout part, that also can be handled automatically. Okay. So I think we have another person joining in. Okay. So there you go. So you can see that it's been added to the cart. On top, we have this uh, added over here. And uh, let's add a couple more products. So you can see how quick this is. If you click on view cart, generally, if it's a traditional WordPress setup, you have, if you want to change uh, some of the products, you have to change it and then you have to come over here and update the cart, which is, uh, which is not a great experience, but you can see that you, the moment you click like this, there's a query that goes and automatically the uh, amount is updated everywhere. You can also remove the products like this over here. Okay. Uh, and then you can click on proceed to check out. You can fill up all of the details. I'm not going to go ahead and fill out everything, but uh, yeah, there is a demo. You can test it out yourself. Uh, you can select any of the payment gateways and place the order. So once you place the order, uh, there is a query that goes and actually the mutation and it creates the order on the WordPress itself, which means that there's a session that's maintained on WordPress. That's how WooCommerce actually works. Okay. So you can test it out and it then redirects you to the WordPress site. Okay, so you can check out both ways. Uh, we have explained to you what are different ways of doing the same thing. If you are looking forward for an offline WooCommerce store, then a local storage, saving that information in local storage is a, a good option because otherwise the data won't be available offline uh, when you, if the user wants to do add to cart. But if you're wanting to do live, then you can take this approach as well. Okay, great. How can I get your tutorials? So you can go to coditech.com. Okay. Coditech.com slash courses. So if you come over here, we have a courses section. If you click on courses, you've got different courses available uh, that you can check out for WordPress, Redux. And by the way, this is also PWA. Uh, this whole site is PWS. So you can install it on your mobile as well. So this is the Gatsby section. And this is actually where you're going to get all of the courses. So this is the series you can follow. Um, and this is where you're going to get all of the information about how to use the theme, how to build the theme. So I'm adding the videos over here and I'll be adding today's recording as well. So I'm planning to build all of the features that you've spoken about and ask me on the questions as well. All right, great. So let me just share that. Okay, do we have any other questions? Let's see, nope. Awesome, so that's about it. And uh, Sagar, uh, Sayed, do you have anything else to add? Nope. Great, so I hope you don't have any further questions. Thank you so much for joining this evening. It was amazing uh, to see you in this workshop and I hope you had some great learnings here. Thank you everyone. See you then. Bye-bye.